Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, this is part two of restoring my 1917 Avery drill press. And if you watched last week's episode, uh, we uh, made a uh, drive system for it, or partially. And we're going to finish that up today. Uh, just to refresh your memory, this is what we're building right here. Uh, it's, it, the drive will hang off the back. It was originally a line shaft drive or something like that. And we made this uh, pulley last week too. That's part of it. Anyway, let's get started. This is a bracket that hangs off the uh, back of the drill press and it'll have that uh, step down pulley. Uh, right now I'm drilling holes to bolt it together. I was going to weld it except I was afraid of distortion. And uh, I was afraid it would affect the alignment of these bushings here. Uh, so we're going to drill a couple of holes and I'll uh, put some bolts in and then take these C-clamps off and then finish it up. That's a, a drill for the tap size. Now I'm going to drill a clearance hole for the quarter inch bolt through the top plate. Yeah. Now we can drill the rest of the holes without that C-clamp being in the way. Well, I need to cut those. That right there will be a slot. That'll be a key. That'll be a key. And there'll be a slot for each each width of that. That's one and three quarter inches. So I'll step the slots one and three quarter inches. And uh, this goes right there. Still got to drill three holes in that. Just a little refresher. I gotta bore holes in that and key it, uh, cut some keyways, and then slots in the shaft for the uh, to disengage the pulley and slide it. A lot of work to do. Drilling this to seven eighths of an inch, and then I gotta open it up to uh, one inch to fit that shaft. This is my gear indexer. Right there is half inch rod. That's what will be going through the hole. 
and I'm going to drill the holes in the wood here, 5 eighths in diameter, which is that right there. I want to leave enough wood out here so that this pulley has strength, but I also want it far enough out to where it can not, not interfere with the bore. Now this bushing is slightly oversized, the actual bore is right there. So I think that's good right there. That's inch and a quarter from center. Okay, I got my drill pretty close to center there. This is my tool post drill here. And I want to go uh, 12 and a half turns, which is inch and a quarter on my uh, cross slide. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Now this is slightly smaller in diameter than the pulley, which doesn't hurt a thing, but the pulley will be about right there. It's three and a half, the pulley's four. So that's I've got my indexer set, so we're ready to drill. I'm just going to drill part way through and then use it as a pilot hole for the final size. Take it over on the drill press. Well, I got my pulley on a one-inch shaft there, and uh, I'm go it it will slip on that shaft, but it's kind of tight. It's a slightly over, slightly larger one-inch shaft, inch and a few thousandths over. So I'm going to use it just to mark these holes. And I'm going to drill the rest of it in the drill press. I wouldn't mind drilling it on here, except that it's not locked to that shaft. I'm afraid it'll, it'll rotate. Okay. This setup here is a little bit nerve-wracking. I've done my best to make sure everything's square. But when you're drilling in wood, the bits tend to wander, and I need this to go straight through. So, now there are certain kinds of bits that do really well. One of them is that right there, a brad point, which is what I have in here. But I don't have a 5 8 brad point, brad point drill, and that's what needs, that's what that hole needs to be. So I'm going to use a spade bit, because they don't tear out wood. If I use a twist drill, it'll tear it out real bad. These tend to wander, but I'm going to drill most of the way through with this pilot. And the pilot's small enough that it's smaller than this taper here. So it should, I only have to go maybe that far, uh, unguided. So it should, hopefully, uh, not wander. This is just barely long, long enough to go through. Boy, this is... <laughs> This is nerve-wracking. It's most important for it to be perfectly in line on this side. If by chance I'm off when I get to the other side, I will enlarge the hole a little bit, but I'd rather not.
Well, yeah, it looks pretty good. Looks real good. Almost through there. I like it. Okay, I got this, these two discs bolted together with a couple shoulder bolts, half inch shoulder bolts. And I'm going to cut a key with this uh, mill because I don't have a, a brooch. What I did is I took the mill and just marked the outer edge there. I gotta I'm gonna drill a hole for a set screw. Okay. I've got this sitting on a bar and I got these spacers in here because it was the bottom of this these discs was hitting the lead screw on my vise. <clears throat> but I got the same distance as here from the back jaw uh, to where I cut my keyway. So I'm all set up. All I have to do is line that end of that drill up with that little mark I made and tighten the vise. And I should be perfectly lined up. That rod going through there keeps everything square this way. Okay, I've got to cut three slots in here. Take this down to three quarter inch and uh, cut some keyways in it. But first, I got to turn it down here, and then I'll take it over to the mill and cut the keyways. It's be an eighth inch wide and about an eighth inch deep. Should be uh, two, two more slots. Wait a minute, one. That's the far left position, middle. Yeah, two more slots. Okay, I got to cut a quarter inch keyway there and a quarter inch keyway there, about five eighths of an inch long, and then I got to cut a three sixteenths keyway here. This one doesn't have to be lined up with these, but these two have to be lined up perfectly. So I got a little bit of a little bit too much stick out over here, but I'm going to take it slow and see if I can mill a slot there because I don't want to move it in my vise because I don't want to lose my orientation this way.
let's see. I think I need to take that off. I thought about welding those on and I'm glad I didn't because <laughs> it would be very difficult to get together and doable but not easy. Okay. I made those keys purposely diagonal like that instead of like that so that I wouldn't get it flopped and these bars wouldn't be parallel. Yeah, I like it so far anyway. <laughs> I like it. Oh, that's going to work good there.
Yeah, I like it. Well, I put this pulley on and made a belt off camera. Uh, making a belt may, may be the topic for a future video. But now we're going to make the drive. I, I couldn't be more pleased with this. You loosen the belt. Disengage the pulley from the shaft and slide it over. Tighten the belt. And you're ready to go. I'm getting excited. I think it's going to work good. Now we're going to make the motor bracket. The motor is going to be right there. I've got a piece of hex stock cut to the right width and we're going to drill the end of it and put some 5 16 threads in there and put a couple of 3 8 shoulder bolts in. Then I'll mount a plate to that with the slots for the uh, motor mount.
Well, that about wraps it up for today. I could not be more pleased with the way this thing's turning out. Uh, next week, we'll start stripping paint, pulling parts off it, uh, maybe change a few bearings. Uh, who knows what else? A lot of cleaning. At um, some point, we'll have to make a new stand. Kind of looking forward to that because I get to play with my new Yes Tig Walter. Uh, anyway, thanks for joining me. Be sure and subscribe and ring that bell.